Therefore, it's time for members' statements. I noticed that uh, I stole 10 seconds, so I'm waiting 10 seconds for the member to settle in. Therefore, the member from Scarborough Rouge River. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. We are all proud Ontarians because we live in the best country in the world. Most of the world wants to be here because of our inclusiveness and ability to live harmoniously together. But Mr. Speaker, I came across an alarming video game concept that is being promoted in Ontario. It's a game idea that defies our values. It's called the Dirty Chinese Restaurant. Based on the game trailer, the game would use every negative demeaning stereotype of Chinese community imaginable. The object of the game is for the player to use every means possible to cut costs in the restaurant by feeding cats and dogs as meat, garbage as vegetable, evading taxes, and employing non-residents. The company whose motto is, quotation, because of being politically correct is so boring, quotation close, is based in Markham, Ontario. I urge Google and Apple not to distribute this dirty Chinese restaurant app. As Ontario PC, we have already declared this game idea as a derogatory, tasteless, and racist. We have an anti-racism directorate for a reason in Ontario to condemn and put a stop to these racist endeavors. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Hamilton Mountain. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Recently, my federal counterpart, Scott Duvall, the member of parliament for Hamilton Mountain, announced that he would be introducing a private member's bill in Ottawa to ensure pensions are protected when companies file for bankruptcy protection. Companies have been using the CCAA to deprive workers and pensions of what they were promised throughout their working lives. We saw it in Nortel, we saw it at U.S. Steel, and we are seeing it now at Sears. We, workers agreed to lower wage increases so that some of that money could be put into pension plans to provide stability and a measure of comfort when they retired. Then they had the rug pulled out from under them. Despite their decades of server, service, workers found themselves at the end of the line and have to watch as shareholders, banks and creditors all get taken care of ahead of them. That's an absolute disgrace. Speaker, today I want to remind all members of this House of a motion that was discussed in this chamber last year. The motion from the member of Oshawa directed the Legislative Assembly to call on the Government of Canada to do exactly what will be brought forward in the House of Commons by Scott Duvall. That motion was passed by the members of this Assembly, and I beg the members to act now. Please contact your federal counterpart and tell them that Ontario needs them to support this private member's bill. Thank you very much. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Eglinton Lawrence. Yes, uh, before I start my statement, I want to uh, support my colleague from Scarborough Rouge River on that condemnation of that racist ad. I couldn't agree with him more. Uh, I just want to uh, talk about an incredible event we had in Eglinton Lawrence uh, last night. We had over 400 people show up showing support for the cultural center of the Italian Canadian community and the greater community, the Columbus Center. Uh, we had uh, uh, the local uh, soccer club, the North York Football Club. We had seniors, we had doctors, lawyers, uh, working people of all sorts who came out and said, do not touch or destroy the Columbus Center, which houses the Carrier Art Gallery, the Alberto Di Giovanni Library, the Rotunda, the beautiful grounds. And we totally agree with the North York Community Council, who totally rejected the application to demolish and build this new joint use facilities that proposed by the Catholic School Board and uh, the Bill of Charities, Inc., who are trying to redevelop this place. So I want to thank Ernie and Sharon Lustig for helping organize it, Ian McDonald from Casa, Murray Rich uh, came, Vera Held, uh, Mayor John Tory showed up, and he 
showed his concern with this proposal to demolish the Columbus Centre. And we want to thank the mayor for showing up. Mary Arcocha, the, the, or Eduardo De Santo, an old time NDP, was right by my side saying, Do not touch the Columbus Centre. Thank you. Further member, famous member from Niagara West, Lambert. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week, I brought up before this House the sad case of Killian Lodge in Grimsby, where an estimated 50 beds are likely to be moved out of the Niagara region and into Hamilton, out of an area of the province where wait times are already nearing four years. Over the weekend, I attended a peaceful protest by staff from Clack Local 302 at Killian's neighbouring retirement home, Maplecrest Village. They are protesting deep staffing cuts by Rivera Homes to Maplecrest Village as well as Garrison Place in Fort Erie. Many of the frontline staff at these homes will see a drastic reduction in their work hours. Some will be reduced from full-time to part-time status, resulting in a loss of health benefits. Maplecrest is losing 138 service hours bi-weekly, and health care workers and residents are paying the price. Staff report that residents at these homes rely on the care provided to ensure they receive the right medicine at the right time. Residents often forget their medical restrictions involving food and also need assistance with basic activities of daily living. This Liberal government has abdicated its responsibility Sadly. to properly fund long-term care, leaving hundreds of thousands of seniors to go without the care they need and deserve. The people of Ontario, and particularly our seniors, are suffering from the policies of this government. Shameful. Whether it's due to the increased cost of doing business in our province or waste and mismanagement in the health care system, 14 years of Liberal mis mismanagement in this government is making life harder for every day for those in need of care. Sadly Thank you, Mr. Respect. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Nickelbelt. Thank you, Speaker. It was an honour and a privilege for me to attend a tree planting ceremony at Lively District Secondary School in my riding of Nickelbelt. It was a wonderful way to celebrate uh, Charlie Tuttle. Uh, Charlie was a long-standing principal at Lively High, and I want to thank Mrs. Tuttle, her three daughters, as well as their families for attending the ceremony. It was also a time to celebrate Canada 150, the 60th anniversary of Lively High School. Yes, it opened in 1957, and the Walden community as a whole. The tree planting was made possible thanks to the generosity of Walden Home Hardware, Tree Canada, the Tree Nursery in Macero, and many sponsors, including Battistelli, your independent grocer, who supplied enough cake speaker to feed 400 attendants. But you know what, speaker, behind this truly fun and proud celebration, we all knew that we were also celebrating another victory the victory of student, family, education worker in the whole community who managed to keep Lively High School open. Last year at this time, the future of Lively High looked pretty grim. Like so many schools outside of the downtown core, Lively High was slated for closure. But we won, Speaker. We kept it open. Lively District Secondary School is part of our community. It allows us to be a community. Long live Lively High and Thanks, and may the hawk fly proudly. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Durham. Thank you, Speaker. Yesterday, big brothers, big sisters of Clarendon celebrated 40 years of service. It was a, I was very proud to be part of their celebration. Big brothers, big sisters of Clarendon was founded by Lionel Parker and Jack Monday in 1977 and has been creating long-lasting, meaningful friendships ever since. This agency has been providing terrific services to the Clarendon community for 40 years, leaving a lasting and positive impact on the lives of so many individuals. Big Brothers Big Sisters of Clarendon continues to expand and develop its programs to serve the ever-growing and changing communities in need of its services. Ev e events such as their Big three and three road hockey tournament, tournament, harvest tea party, as well as bowl for kids sake, continuously bring our community together while creating awareness and fundraising opportunities for the agency. Last year alone, Big Brothers Big Sisters of Clarendon was, was able to provide support for over 500 children and youth. In closing, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank the agency and all the volunteers for their valuable work, for the valuable work they do, and congratulate them on their important milestone. Thank you. 
Thank you. For the member's statements, the member from Dufferin Caledon. Thank you, Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise on behalf of the residents of Dufferin Caledon and commend a fabulous role model for the town of Caledon. This year, the region of Peel hosted Special Olympics Ontario Summer Games. The Caledon Country Club held the golf competitions where Caledon's own Jason Scorgia was competing. I was able to visit Jason at the Caledon Golf Club during the golf competition, and I was part of his cheering section as he went on to win the gold medal. Jason is a tireless ambassador for Special Olympics. Through his fundraising efforts, he was able to sponsor three athletes to participate in this summer's games. He also operates his charity, Jason's Quest, which raises money for Motion Bowl and the Special Olympics. Jason has also published a book called Jason's Quest to help raise funds. Jason's hard work and community spirit are the true embodiment of the Special Olympics athlete's oath. Let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. I hope everyone has the opportunity to learn more about the great work being done at Special Olympics Ontario. It is a wonderful opportunity to have fun, develop skills, and build self-esteem. I congratulate all of the athletes, families, and volunteers on the successful Summer Special Olympics and wish them all the best as they prepare for the 2019 Winter Games in Sault Ste. Marie. Thank you. As a board member at the provincial level, I couldn't agree with you more. Thank you. Member statements, a member from Barrie. Thank you, Speaker. I have spoken before in this House about how bringing youth mental health services to my riding of Barrie has been one of my earliest priorities. And today I would like to recognize a constituent who has worked extremely hard to support this project. Three years ago, Zach Hoffer began planning for what would become a ride and a, a run and bike ride journey from Barrie to Ottawa to raise funds for youth mental health, inspired in part by Terry Fox. Initially planning on raising $10,000 for the Royal Victoria Regional Health Centre, the Zach Make the Tracks campaign had already raised five times as much by the time he left Barrie on August 13. With support from his mother, Shelley, stepfather, Derek, grandparents, Doug and Barb Roberts, and their family friend, Sylvia Stark, Zach completed the 410-kilometer journey on September 10, World Suicide Awareness and Prevention Day. As of now, they have already raised $80,000 and had the chance to meet with the Prime Minister, the Governor General. Raising this amount for charity is impressive for anyone, but it is remarkable when you consider that Zach is only 13 years old. Next month, Zach will be among 40 volunteers receiving an award for his contributions to the community, community life in Barrie. Speaker, on behalf of this House, I would like to congratulate Zach on this amazing accomplishment and thank Zach and his family for their hard work in supporting our local hospital and raising awareness about youth mental health. What an outstanding young man Zach is. Show off. Out of boy, Zach. Member statements. The member from Whitby, Oshawa. Uh, speaker, I rise to commend nine year old uh, James Potvin from Whitby, who recently made a difference for thousands of other children with autism spectrum disorder. James Speaker is among the 3,000 children on a waiting list to attend Grandview Children's Centre. The Children's Centre began operation in the 1980s and was designed to serve approximately 400 children and youth with special needs. Speaker. Over time, the demand for services throughout the region of Durham increased, and Grandview has faced challenges in meeting these demands. In late August, Speaker, James decided to help by riding his bike to Ottawa to raise funds for the Children's Centre. By the time James finished his ride to Ottawa with his father, he would raised over $10,000 in donations. Wow. These funds, Speaker, will go toward Grandview's operating costs and help thousands of children get off the waiting list and into the many outstanding programs and services provided by Grandview. Speaker, communities as they should came out to support James Ride as he approached Ottawa. Support that means the world to a nine-year-old boy. Support that means the world to the other 3,000 children on the waiting list. James made a difference. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements this afternoon.